Hello. If you're a follower of mine, you'll know that here at Home Grown Veg in the UK, um, we garden predominantly in pots, buckets, bags and three raised beds. Uh, we haven't got a lot to work with, uh, so we have to make do with what we've got, and that's what we do. Shortly we're going to pop out into the garden, and we're going to do the last job of the year. Now it's been raining now for at least two or three weeks, more or less, uh, non-stop. It's been quite incessant. We've never, definitely not seen the sun for two weeks, and it's quite misty out there. Um, so there isn't a great deal you can do in the garden. We're in our winter months now. Um, but this job is definitely uh, an, a winter month job that we're going to do. And we're going to do it on just one of our raised beds. And we're doing it on one raised bed because what we're going to do doesn't suit all vegetables. Okay, we're going to lime one of my raised beds. Now I have three raised beds uh, and because the garden is on a slope and because the beds run down the slope I have a bottom bed, a middle bed and a top bed. Now in the bottom bed we have winter onions growing and we have leeks. As you can see it will be difficult to lime that raised bed so that raised bed is not getting limed. In the middle bed I have a layer of chop and drop on that bed and that bed is going to be used for growing potatoes um, next year. So that bed is not getting limed either. Liming a bed that's going to have potatoes in it isn't the thing to do. Uh, the lime would cause the potatoes to scab. So we're not liming that raised bed. Now this is the bed we're going to lime. This is the top raised bed and it already has uh, half a dozen spring cabbages in it. Okay, so I've already added some lime in the area of the spring cabbages. Um, and I've been using a pH meter and I've been trying to raise the pH level to a, a neutral position, a 7 plus pH. Um, we started out at about 6, 6.5 pH and unfortunately uh, the lime doesn't seem to have, have had a great deal of effect over the period of time it's been on. Now I think there's a, a number of reasons for that. Firstly it hasn't been on long enough. Secondly I didn't put enough on. But thirdly uh, it doesn't look as though it's dissolving into the bed. Let me show you the type of uh, lime that I put on. This is it. As you can see, it's granular. Hey, Mo. I've got Molly with us. I'm not too sure if Molly's in shot. Hey, sweet dad. Okay. Yeah, it's granular. Um, and although we've had lots of rain, it doesn't seem to have broken down. I can still see it on the surface of the, um, of the raised bed. Even though I raked the raised bed over, um, it's still there. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't seem to want to break down that quickly and get into the soil and do what it's supposed to do. So what I've done is I've been down to our local garden centre and I've got this stuff. This is also a garden lime but as you can see it's a powder. Okay it's crushed garden lime. Now I'm fairly sure that this will more readily dissolve into the soil when the rain hits it. I'm fairly confident of that. So I think this uh, crushed lime is probably a better bet than this granular, granular lime in terms of its ability um, to get into the soil 
and, and alter the pH of the soil. So we're going to dispense with that and we're going to use this. And we're just going to use this on our top raised bed. Now let me show you the quantities we're going to be using. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the bed into four equal areas. Um, it's an eight foot by four foot bed. Uh, I'll let you work out what that is in square feet uh, in terms of each of the uh, the four areas. Um, but I'm going to um, roughly uh, divide the bed up into four areas and I've got these four yoghurt containers and in each of those I've put half a pound of this garden lime. Okay, so there's half a pound of garden lime in there and that's what I'm going to apply to each of those areas. Now, this is a bit hit and missy for me. I'm not too sure if this is too much, not enough. We're not going to be planting any brassicas into this raised bed for at least uh, three months now. So we can give this a go for a month and then we'll uh, revisit the bed and see if it's made any difference. We'll see if it's had an effect. So what we'll do now is We'll go outdoors, we'll divide the bed up into four, um, we'll take some pH readings, then we'll apply this garden lime, and then we'll visit it again um, a month or so down the line and see if it's altered the pH of the bed. How's that sound? Is that a deal? Are you up for this, Molly? Eh? Are you sweet Are you up for this? Yeah, Molly says she's up for it. Can you see it? There she is, poking her head in. <laughs> OK, come on sweetheart, man, you don't knock those over. Come on, we'll go and do this job.
we're not where we want to be just yet but we are heading in the right direction there's still another two months until we plant some brassicas in this bed and so that gives me ample time to add more lime if that's what I decide to do but in any case when we plant these brassicas it is my intention to line the planting holes with a little more lime if you're checking the pH of your raised bed and you're looking to adjust the pH to suit the vegetables you intend to grow my advice would be to Google best pH for growing vegetables I'm sure you'll find more than one chart giving you advice and then try to move the pH in the direction that best suits the vegetables you intend growing hope you've enjoyed this video this is homegrown veg signing out